Hey everybody, it's Santa the Red, and welcome back to Highway Blossom. Finally, the last we left off, we're now in Arizona. Apparently, looking for the next part of the treasure, which is in the canyon, not the Grand Canyon. That makes Marina very sad. Anyway, I turned around. Marina has a couple of king-sized candy bars in her hands and a large bottle of Coke tucked under her arm. Ew. Chocolate bars and Coke. Ugh. Fuck. You seriously need all that? Here's gonna do, you know what? I thought they could share. Oh, she actually looks kind of sad there. She gives me her best offended puppy impression, which she pulls off pretty damn well. Look at that. Look at that face. Look at that. You'll be leaving your heart of ice eventually. It's slow to. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Don't act like it doesn't affect you. I still don't want anything, but I can't say no to that. Here, I'm going to use the bathroom to meet you at the car. I place my wall atop, my wall atop the pile of candy she's carrying and send her towards the attendant. Oh, no. Bad idea. When I come back out of the bathroom, Marina's still talking to the clerk. There's a bag in her hand, so she must have already finished paying and gotten distracted talking. I joined the two of them. Closed off, so it's only guarded by, so all of the guided tours are open right now. Marina looks like she's seen a ghost. What's up? I'll take my wallet from where it's just sitting, forgotten on the counter. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was just asking about the canyon and the tours and stuff. The clerk nods. Yep, I was just saying how if you're here to sightsee, you might have you might have some trouble. Uh, a lot of it's closed off because of all the kids coming and causing trouble looking for treasure. Damn, that's a pride, but it's frustrating. It wasn't closed off. Well, there are still some tours you can go on. Most of them, I think, but you can't do all the, do the self-guided ones. Marina's look, Mar Mar Marina's, Marina looks at me, eyes wide. Clearly she's expecting some solution from me. <laughs> Just, you have a brain that works. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I just smile at the attendant. Got it. Thank you. And lead a dumb strip Marina out of the store. As I unlock the RV, Marina prances around me. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to take a nap. She stops. Huh? I'm tired, so I'm going to take a nap for a little bit. Uh, check one of the pamphlets, and there's a tour at 6.30, so we'll just join them and then sneak off. Like, on our own? Uh... Yeah? Her eyes go wide again. <gasps> That's so exciting! Amber, you're a genius! <laughs> now she's just smarter than you. I twist the lock of my hair around my finger and glance away. Her constant compliments are a little embarrassing. Especially for stuff that seems so obvious to me. That's because she's dense as fuck. Anything, even remotely intelligent, seems to impress her. But we'll not judge her for it. We'll just smile and go, Oh, pat on that. Thanks, it's not much of a plan, though. Yeah, but at least it's a plan. I thought we were gonna just have to give up or something. Nah, rules are made to be broken and all that. I feel a bit guilty that we'll be breaking rules specifically put in place because of people like us. But I can safely say that we'll be more careful than the average treasure hunter. Can you, though? Just picturing Mariah, I can easily see her smashing down ancient ruins in her search. <laughs> yeah, fuck, you got like a, <laughs> an actual sledgehammer. Just, no! Boom! Where's my gold? I must have revenge. But yeah, wait move at 5.30. Unless you're good going to nap, too. Nope, I'm not tired anymore, so I'll just read some more. Unless you just pass it all the way or something. Alright, good night. Night night! I leave her up, up in the front as I head back to my bed and fall into it. After bunching up my blankets around me, it doesn't take long to fall asleep. Title card! I forgot, there any clicker does just go on its own. Whatever. I wake up slowly, fighting to keep my eyes open. In the back of my head, I feel like something is wrong. It takes a minute before I realize I've overslept. Uh, yeah, let me guess, she fell asleep too. It's a quarter to six. Marina was supposed to wait 15 minutes ago. Marina? I call her name and get no response. Rolling out of bed, I massage my eyes and stumble towards the front. Of course, she's asleep. Sprawled out on the dash with her head buried in her arms. Looks like she's been out for a while. 
Jerking by the shoulder, I shake her awake. Ah, what's up, Amber? Her speech is slurred by sleepiness. I ignore the temptation to make the not you joke. <laughs> How's that book you're reading? It's great, I just put it down to. A look of shock spreads across her face. Mounting horror takes over, she realizes the time. Oh god, I'm so, so sorry. I was just gonna nap, but then I forgot to set an alarm, I mean, to wake me up. Yeah, that's what alarms are for. Freaking out, she hurriedly tries to buckle her seatbelt, failing several times in her frenzy. I pat her on the shoulder as I sit down. It's not even a big deal, but she's so worked up. It's cool, not late yet. Ready to go? Winter just nods, staring at the floor. I buckle up and turn the key. The engine roars to life when I throw it in reverse. I have to crane my neck to make sure I don't run over anyone. Road signs direct us out of town towards the canyon. After spending so long on the highway, going down these streets with lower speed limits feels really restrictive. From the corner of my eye, I watch Marina. She's being abnormally quiet, probably guilt-ridden. She fixes her hair, pops her knuckles, and rubs her shoulders, but she doesn't say anything. Or maybe she's just really tense. Kind of the... Kind of like, uh, you know... That, uh, mounting anxiety, knowing you're about to get in a situation where shit's gonna go down. Finally, I cave. What's wrong with you? Huh? Uh, what do you mean? Her tone of voice is stressed. Maybe I'm more intimidating than I think. You're being weird. Super quiet. Oh, um, well just quiet all would actually be weird for her, to be honest. Um, I don't know if you're mad at me or not. What, we're falling asleep? She nods. <laughs> nah, I'm not mad. Trust me, you'd know for sure if I was. Like with Mariah! I told you it wasn't a big deal, didn't I? You promise? Yeah, I promise. We're gonna bounce in her seat, immediately cheerier. Okay, cool, because if you were mad, like, mad at me, that'd be a bad sign. Sign of what? That we wouldn't be good partners. You know, treasure hunting buddies. Oh, we're partners now, are we? You're the sidekick, right? No way, I'm totally the main character. You're here because of me. I laugh, and she turns away, smiling. She's a lot cuter when she smiles. I've been smelling more too, I realize. As I think that, it starts to make me feel sad again. No, she's melting your heart of stone, we've already gone over this. Do we deserve to be smelling right now? Hamber. Huh? Like she, like she read my mind, Marina snaps me out of it. Can we listen to Super Crush again? Do you seriously like that one? Super Crush is one of those groups that Gramps loved to show off to the people because they were so weird. All the members played a little different instrument on each album, so it was like a whole other band every time. Yeah, it was... different. But in a good way. That's definitely true. With one hand on the steering wheel, I dig around in the bend of tapes by my feet. I flick my gaze between that and the road. Eventually, I find the one I'm looking for. It is a Halloween orange case with a text that looks like slime. When it starts to play, Marina hums along. She's almost on key. Guess she liked it enough to remember how the songs go. I crank the volume up, earning a grin from Marina. The sound is tinny and distorted at this level. More distorted than usual, I mean, but it's also more fun. Our smiles last all the way until we roll into the nearly empty parking lot. As I turn the volume back down, I can tell she's staking the same thing I am. Amber? Yeah? Should there be, like, other people waiting here? probably should. What time is it? I'm gonna twist around a check. Uh, 6.20. What the hell? Did they start early? There are other cars around, but they're all unoccupied. My parking job is hasty and I take up two spaces. Why don't bother to correct it? You bitch! No! Oh, scenery change. Cool. Small ruins over there and... <laughs> we said it. We hurry out of the RV. I almost forget the key and the ignition and have to double back to grab it. Moon is already over the information desk, probably talking to a ranger. But then she turns back to me, the despair in her face visible even though it's getting dark. There's no one here. There aren't any lights on inside either. Probably close at six. I vaguely recall reading that in the brochure, but I thought there would still be someone around for the tours. Don't panic. I jog back to the RV and lock it again. Rummaging through the glove box, I pull out the little blue flash hut that Gramps gave me years ago. Or a few years ago. I click it on and off a couple times to make sure that it works. 
After I lock everything back up again, I join Marina by the unhelpful uh, help desk. <laughs> She's bouncing on her heels, hands clasped together. Hey, it's all right. Worst comes worse, we'll just do it tomorrow. What if someone finds the treasure tonight? I don't have an answer for that one. Guess we'll just have to catch up, to catch up then, huh? Well, how would you know? Unless one announced it, which you told one person, but... Well, three people technically, I mean one team. Turning on the flash, I swing the beam around. Well, there's still some daylight left. It isn't much. Maybe half an hour at the most. Catch up to what? The tour group, silly. Even if we're late, they can't have left that long ago. And they'll be stopping a bunch, so we can, should still be able to find them easily. By ourselves? Her voice is almost a squawk, like a surprised parrot. Well, yeah. I don't see any else around, do you? I swivel around, illuminating nothing but rocks and bushes. Come on, it'll be fine. It's not like there are going to be bears or mountain lions as close to a parking lot. You never know. Those kind of things live here? Welcome to... Well, most places, really. If she didn't know that, then what is she afraid of? Probably. Don't tell me she's afraid of ghosts or something stupid. Probably, I don't know. But come on, wasting time. Marina whimpers. Then, surprising me, she grabs my hand. Hers is sweaty and warm. I turn to look at her and meet her, her wide eyes. I think she might cry and makes me regret being so pushy. We don't have to do it if you don't want to. She shakes her head but clings to me like a kid, her free hand buried in my clothes. If it were any brighter out, she'd see my face turn red. Now, like I said, if we don't go now, someone else will beat us to it. Just stay close, okay? <laughs> Just get behind her. Please. Yeah, of course. She lets me leave but doesn't let go of my hand. A large wooden sign marks the start of the trail. So, uh, are you scared of the dark? No answer. But you were fine at Shiprock. It was different. Marina's arms jerk, but she doesn't let go. That was a town. <laughs> She's fucking terrified. <laughs> With people. And roads. And no mountain lines. <laughs> oh, fuck. She's so adorable. The temptation to tease her is more strong, but I don't. That'd be kind of messed up right now. Every time a bird calls or something, it makes a, or something makes the brush shake, I feel her flinch a little. Somehow, even this side of her is cute too. A little childish, sure, but it's nice to have her allow me to keep her safe. Ah. To take her mind off things, I make small talk. So, what are you gonna do once you're filthy rich from the treasure? Sorry, what? I asked what you'll do with the share of the treasure. Oh, um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't thought about it. I'm right here looking and you don't even have a plan for it. It was a spur of the moment thing. What about you, huh? I don't know either. Ha! See, I'm not... Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't planning on looking for it, you know? I haven't spent as much time thinking about it. I glance behind me and see me to stick at her tongue. I laugh. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, let's see. I definitely need to pay off Graham's hospital and funeral expenses. And after that, I guess I should probably get the motorhome fixed up. It's not gonna break down or anything, but it's kind of old. Why don't I just buy a new one? Hell no! Yeah, it's... <laughs> Blonde to her grandfather. Too, too much sentimental value there. My response comes out snappier than I intended. It's just that it has sentimental value, you know? I'd rather keep that by the buy a newer better car. I grew up in that thing, I could never just replace it. And after that I'd probably just keep doing what I was doing before I met you. And what's that? Wandering. Don't you want to stop wandering sometime? Well, I stepped slow a little bit. It's an innocent question, but it hits me hard. Not yet, no. I whispered. Oh Marina catches up next to me, dropping my hand as she does so. At least I'm not the only one without a goal. Her situation's different for <laughs> different from yours, Marina. Just saying. You're just kind of an airhead. I poke her in the sun and she squirms a couple of, away a couple of feet. Ow! Dork. It's hard to stay sad around her. As you turn a road a turn uh as you turn around a road a curve in the road, I don't lie, I'm having trouble with the sentence. As they turn around a curve in the road, the tour group comes into view. Just ahead is a cluster of people, most of them armed with flashlights. 
It's hard to know for sure, but I can see at least a dozen different figures. The tour guide is shining his light up at a rock face, illuminating some designs on it. Everyone has their backs to us. Try to be as sneaky as possible. And with that, I'm going to call this episode here. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.